Thanks. Thanks for having me back. <laughs> I'm other. Okay. Um, mine's not quite as exciting as the park and rec stuff, but um, we, in, over the last year and a half, we've received a lot of um, COVID relief funding, and um, so I'm just going to kind of share some of that about that with you. Um, we're now working on hopefully the last of the funding from COVID or from COVID relief, which is ESSER three. And the requirements for each of the different funding things have has increased. And for one of the requirements for ESSER three, because it is the largest amount of money that we've received over all of the different grants that we've gotten, um, is that we did a community or a survey. And so we surveyed our parents, um, parents, staff, and our students. And we we surveyed students in grades eight, eighth and 11th grade. And so the other part of that requirement is that we share this with our DAC, and then we'll also put it on our website for the community to see. But so um, we, we really wanted to get just feedback on how we want to spend that money. This right here is kind of an overview of all those different relief funds that we've gotten over the last year and a half. And you can see the first, the darker blue, the first thing we got was the coronavirus relief funds, and that was $4.7 million that we got on that first round. And there were, that was pretty um, open. It had to be related to COVID and COVID relief, but there weren't a lot of requirements. You know, they, they just kind of gave us the money, and we decided how we were going to use that money. Um, but it did have to be COVID related. Um, then the next one in the little bit lighter blue is ESSER 1. And that, there were a little bit more guidelines with it. And ESSER 1, we got $1.2 million. And ESSER stands for Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief Funds. So ESSER 1. And then the lighter blue in the middle is ESSER 2. And ESSER 2, we got $4.9 million. And then along with that $4.9 million, um, our special ed for special ed supplemental um, funding, they got 86000 And so now we're on to ESSER 3. And we have been, um, we just got ESSER 2 approved um, about a month ago. And ESSER 3 is due, um, our application is due in December. But we have a lot of things that we have to um, get accomplished before we can submit that. And so this is one of it, sharing it with you and then sharing it out in like our website so that our community can see it. Um, and so that's what I'm going to kind of go over tonight um, is the ESSER 3. And with ESSER 3, we ended up with, we received 11.2 million. So it is the largest amount. So, well, I'm going to just go over just before I switch that just what ESSER 3 funds can be used for. So these funds are one-time and short-term expenditures. And they are used, supposed to be used to address the impact that the pandemic has had on the, on the district. And it's, the funding is intended to safely reopen and sustain the safe operation of our schools and address the impact that the pandemic has had on our students, like through learning loss and mental health supports, things like that. So there are a lot of guidelines around what it can be used for. Um, and again, these are one-time funds. And they have to be, um, so they don't want the districts to use it for things that are going to be an on ongoing cost, because obviously it's going away. And we would have to sustain whatever, um, you know, if, if, it's not a, if it's an ongoing cost, we'd have to be able to sustain that. So, and the money does have to be spent by September of 2024. Okay, so the next thing is the survey, and these are just the questions that were on the survey. Um, it, it, we asked what their role was. Um, we asked what school does your child attend or where are you currently employed? And then we asked them to rank um, the different categories in the order of importance to them. And it would be very hard to get specifics from them, so we kind of had them rank what order they thought things should go in, and then what additional ideas. And so the last one um, was an open-ended question for them. 
Um, but the areas that they could rank was learn were learning loss, social, emotional, mental well-being, health and safety needs, continuity of operations, and technology and digital tools. So they kind of ranked those. And it was interesting because you're going to see kind of the re oh out of that um, we got 1,347 responses, which. You know, we surveyed a lot more than that, but that is, it's decent. Um, I kind of talked to some other districts around here, and in comparison to them, we're pretty comparable about what kind of results we got, the number. Um, 849 were from parents, guardians, um, students, 160 responded, um, the staff, 470, and then community, 29. I'm not, I think the community and the parent thing somehow got in there together, I don't, I'm not real sure. And then some of the responses, and there were, um, we had a lot of responses, <laughs> and of the open-ended ones, and I just want to, um, well, you can see here, out of those five areas, they're pretty, pretty equal. Um, learning loss was the highest, um, and with the learning loss, 20%, the requirement is 20% of the money had to be of that 11.2 million had to be spent on learning loss. And that did come out number one in our survey too. And that could be things like summer school, um, interventionist, um, before and after school tutoring, things like that. So, so then the open-ended question at the end, these are some of the responses. And, and I put asterisks by the ones that were repeated the most, and and some of them are great ideas. Some we've already had as ideas. Um, others are ones that I can kind of explain why we can't really consider them um, because they're because of that ongoing cost or it isn't related to COVID relief. So before and after school tutoring came up a lot. Increased pay for staff or give bonuses came up a lot. The problem with that is it's hard to sustain. We can't sustain that. So that's not one that really can come out of the S or three funds. Um, update older buildings, that really doesn't have anything to do with COVID. Would love to use it for that, but can't. Um, better gyms, playground equipment, more field trips, and after school clubs. Again, that's not you know, really COVID related. Um, increased staff, you know, we did, in, we have increased staff with some of our SR2 money, and we have planned to increase some with our SR3, some of our um, teachers, we've in increased some numbers when we could hire them. Um, that was one of our goals, was to make some of our class sizes smaller for a couple of years because of that learning loss. However, right now, teachers are pretty hard to hire. Um, EAs. Um, we do. We did hire some additional EAs. Again, they're, they've been kind of hard to hire. Same with bus drivers. Um, but we did hire um, a couple of in, uh, extra interventionists. Um, let's see. Then mental health was another one. Um, we have hired additional counselors, social workers, and TOSAs in the district um, this year and last year, or this year especially. Um, so we did hire some of those positions out of some of the relief funds and plan to continue that with the SR3 funds. Um, because we do feel like the mental health thing, that's been a, that's been a very strong need um, with students coming back after being home a year and um, just at all levels. I think everybody feels that. Um, better ventilation in our schools. Um, right now, um, Dave can maybe help with this, but right now, um, are they working on the ventilation at Watson already or is it in going? Okay, they're t okay. But ventilation alone will take up millions of the dollars. Um, you know, that's a very, yeah, yeah. So and that's a high cost one. Uh, it is huge. It is. It's huge, and, and we wouldn't be able to do it without this funding. So that, yeah, it is. 
Yep. And we're going to see how far the money will go with that. Um, you know, we've got kind of estimates right now, and we'll we'll see how, you know, if they come, can do it for less than what the estimates are, and we, maybe we can do more. If they come in higher, we maybe can't do as much. So we're going to see. Um, more substitutes was put in there a lot, and you know that's been a that's been hard on all the schools <laughs> um, this year. Substitutes are hard to find, and. Um, and so we've been shortened a lot, a lot of times at the schools this year. And people are covering all over the place. And, um, you know, I'll just tell you, the staffs are wonderful um, about covering and helping in periods that they're not um, teaching and di different things any way they can. Staffs have been amazing with that. Um, so this one, I think, came from one of the kids, microwaves in the cafeterias. <laughs> Um, I think some schools have microwaves in their cafeterias, not all. <laughs> um, support staff when quarantined. They don't want to use their sick days. Um, that was staff, obviously. And we had 259 open-ended responses. So that kind of just... A variety of them, but a lot of them were repeats. So. so our plan, after getting the results and after kind of looking at our needs, this in each of those areas, these are things that we are planning right now um, to use the money for learning loss, you know, summer school at all levels, credit recovery. That's been a big thing at the secondary that we've needed is credit recovery. Because um, during the online, we had a lot of um, students that failed classes. And they're trying to recover those credits. Um, D3 My Way expansion, we went from a program to a school. And yay. <laughs> and um, you know, they we had to do additional some additional classrooms. We um, the programs that they that they use, the cost of those, additional teachers, counselor, administrators, all of that was in addition, and it will be covered. Um, and and, and interventionists, like I said, um, some just different programs like Star Math, Reading Plus. Um, that's kind of to help with the learning loss. Um, literacy consultant, a behavior to behavior toses at French and Sunrise. Um, through June of 2024, and, and like I told you before, 20% um, of that total 11.2 had had to go to um, learning loss, and that's about 2.2. And we're actually going to spend about three million on the learning loss area, and then social emotional, the counselor, the additional counselor count. Counselors at D3 My Way and at Grand Mountain, Catapult Program at the Junior High, and Social Workers. Um, health and Safety is the ventilation projects that we talked about. Um, the continuity of operations um, with our interventions or our title, um, our title schools. This year we got cut title funds and we would have had to let t some teachers go. And we didn't want to do that, and those schools are in need of those interventionists. And so ESSER said that it, they gave that out right off the bat. Um, you can use that. You can use ESSER funds so you don't have to cut those title positions. Um, elementary teachers for additional support and junior high teachers for additional support. Um, and then technology, you know, computers, um, hot spots, uh, Technology professional development trainer. I mean, teach, teachers weren't used to teaching online all the time, and it was a different thing. And and sometimes they still have to go back to that if there's quarantines and things like that. And so, you know, we have a trainer that has worked with our teachers on how to do that more effectively. It's it was a whole new way of teaching. So, yes, yep, because that's the next slide, Lane. Thank you. <laughs> Questions. Yeah, 
the new, okay, kind of both. Um, at the elementary, we do a lot with lost learning, but we also try to add the STEM component to it, um, a GT component to it, just some different things to it to get kids uh, more excited. Um, and then um, at the secondary, they added all those different classes, opportunities for kids. And you know, that that is learning loss. Um, it was really to get kids excited about school and learning again um, after the year they came off of. And we are planning on continuing those at least for the next two years because, um, because that's what we're using this funding for and to get those kids involved again in learning. Right. Yes, and we will continue that reduced cost. We, we want a little bit because we need the buy-in, a little bit for buy-in from the students if they pay a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. That's something we still... They are. They are. And so what are you doing to staff staff So uh, maybe I'll let Kirk handle a little bit of that. But we did, you know, we did, um, for those that were coming back this year, they did get a retention thing because that is, um, they got that over the summer. Um, that is something that we will look at again. Um, you know, it just, we're not sure on where we're at. But yes, that is something that, um, it, it did come up in the survey, and and and, and it's pretty important. Do you want to? A couple things. I mean, right out of the shoots uh, in the early going, uh, there was some money to the staff for really some of the costs that it took them during the pandemic to teach. Uh, folks are home, they were able to run their own supplies, uh, even within the campaign, and utilizing the resources that uh, they just didn't have. It. You know, they weren't able to access the school. As far as the health and wellness piece of it, which was obviously everyone's concern, right? It's mm -hmm. keeping teachers away. They're not necessarily designed to be used, right? Like, you, know, you need a screwdriver for a job, but you're using a hammer, right? You don't want to break it. And one of the things that um, was done to prevent it with for 
using the district's uh, resources for wellness. What is that? What is it? Okay, so the employee assistance program that Ben <laughs> is providing, right? That they offer and how many people they can take on. Uh, and yeah, so that so as far as the health and wellness piece of it, uh, to meet the immediate needs, that that's what we did that and we also added to the secondary supplement of health so that they also so there's something that kind of came together as well. Yeah, exactly. Hey Beth, I did I know that Santa Health are working right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where they used to get paid a certain amount for coverage, we did increase that um, because we know it's been hard, but yeah. One thing else I want to add is you know, I'm one of those guys that when I hear 4.3 or 4.7, I'm like, that seems like a lot. It does. It goes fast. <laughs> it sounds like a ton of money, but when you're thinking about that, that we're spending you know, over six million a month, a month, uh, just in operating expenses. That money uh, went for years and lines and pretty uh, pretty bad. Build lines and all that, and all the ventilation damage, and not being able to do anything else. Kudos to Connie and, and you know, going back to that pie chart as well. Um, you know, to be able to wisely spread that out with all those different areas to make an impact. And and all of it has to be approved. Whatever we we you know, we have to write in the application, you know, who went who, what, where, and where, why, um, on every item, and it all has to be approved. And we, you know, with the past ones, we've had, we've gotten them back, you know, like, oh, you can't do this, and we've had to rethink things. And, you know, so, so sometimes what we think makes sense, um, doesn't get approved. And so, and you had a question. Right. Yeah. Where people are. Mm -hmm.
And, and some of the money from ESSER 1 and ESSER 2, um, and even C the CRF ones, the very first funds that we got, were used for cleaning supplies, um, our masks, um, just different things like that, um, that we still are using and, and are hoping to continue, we'll be able to continue those with those things throughout the whole extent of the, the, the money. Any other questions? Yeah, really. Thank you. We appreciate your time.